Uh, we're going to continue our study, and then tonight uh, we're going to do the last one. We talked about detours, dead ends, and tonight we're going to talk about dry holes. Yeah. Yeah. And we're going to try to uh, uh, get this in if we possibly can. And I need you to pray, pray for me. Amen. Uh, tonight, the 15th chapter of Exodus, verses 22 through 24, will be the basis of our discussion. I'm hoping sometime uh, on a holiday weekend, I can bring our church down here so they can get to meet you. I, I love the tree of life to get to know. Amen. Amen. Uh, and, uh, uh, we get uh, next Friday. We're going to San Diego, California, to install my son. About 85 of us are flying out there. All right. And uh, so I'm, uh, I just have fallen in love with you here. Yeah. Yeah. I told uh, Pastor Greg if I had time, if it was this season, I'd go out and kill one and dress it, leave it for him. But since I don't have time, I won't be bothered with it. I just didn't have time. That's what we're going to do. Uh, 15th chapter, verse 22. So Moses brought Israel from the Red Sea and went into the wilderness of Shira. And they went three days in the wilderness and found no water. When they came to Moriah, they could not drink the water from Moriah, but they were bitter. That's what the name was called Moriah. And the people murmured, uh, gives Moses saying, what shall we drink? All right, all right. Dry holes. Yeah. Right. Amen. Detours. All right. Dead ends. And dry holes. Yeah. In these uh, thrilling chapters we see the children of Israel encounter situations which arose and stir with them the feeling of frustration. All right, all right. Talked about the frustration is a defective emotion, negative emotion that we all have to deal with mm -hmm. as we proceed along the path of life in this fallen and broken world. Right. We said uh, uh, frustration is the upset mm -hmm. of not being able to accomplish or achieve our objective and ambition for whatever reason. It is a feeling that we experience when our hopes have been dashed and our dreams have been shattered. Oh, my brothers and sisters, while I strongly believe that it is vitally important that we have hopes, dreams, and objectives and ambitions that drive and motivate us in life, I'm clearly conscious of the painful reality that there will be time when we will not achieve the thing for which we aspire. Amen. Amen. Yeah. 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 That will cause us to have some frustration. I don't care who you are. Right. I don't care how much Holy Ghost you got. Amen. Amen. There will be time and moments and seasons in yes. your life right. that you're going to have frustration. Yes. Yes. Because things will not always go according to plan. You can live by faith and follow God to some unknown destination. All right, all right. But you'll have to deal with the frustration of famine like Abraham. Well, yeah. Amen. You can guide your life by the highest principles of purity. Yes, yes. And be a model of moral morality and yet experience the frustration Amen. of being falsely charged with sexual misconduct all right, all right. and sentenced to serve time in prison. Like Joseph. Yeah. You can be the apple of God's eye. Yeah. Yeah. Courageously conquer her life. And yet be regularly frustrated by unprovoked malicious threats on your life. Yeah. By a jealous adversary. Yeah. Black people. Yeah. Yeah. You can be dedicated to the discipline of prayer. Yeah. And pray three times a day. Yeah. And every day yet you'll suffer the frustration of being thrown into a den of lions like that. Yeah. Yeah. You 
might be a witness for the Lord. Share the good news of Jesus on the mountain high or the valley low. You might be the seal of heavenly vision and revelation. And yet come to live with the frustration right. of a thorn in your flesh, yeah. like being punk. Yeah. Yeah. Church, I tell you, we all have to face some frustration yeah. in between the point of our deliverance yeah. and the point of our destiny. Yeah. Now, I'll be back to say it if y'all help me. There will be many points of disappointment and frustration. Things just don't always go as we desire. We must understand that nothing is wrong. That's the way life is arranged. Nothing is necessarily awry. Or nothing is skewed or twisted. Nothing is wrong when we meet the frustrations of life. May God call you and ask you a question. What happens when your problems in life are caused by your following God? But what happens with God is your problem. Yeah. And your problem is with God. Do yeah. I have any witness? Yeah. That's why Peter wrote in the first epistle to believing Jews of that world who were frustrated by suffering and persecution. He said, Do not think it strange that the fire trial, which is to try as though something strange has happened to you. Yeah. You need to know that. I don't care who you are, yeah. how well you live, yeah. how much you go to church, and how right you try to treat people. Yeah. You're going to deal with some frustration. Yeah. Look at your neighbors and we're going to deal with it. Yeah. Now, you understand that the bitter trials of life are normal human experiences. Yeah. They confront us all. They perplex and puzzle us. Yeah. Yeah. Many times when you're going through frustration, we ask, why is God allowing this to happen to me? But I want to tell you tonight, the question is not really if God is allowing it to happen to you. The question is, ask yourself, how am I going to react? How am I going to respond to the situation? I mean, are you going to keep the faith in God to help? Are you going to keep the faith in God to strengthen you? Are you going to become a crabby, crabby, a believer filled with pessimism and doubt, become cynical, hard to get along with? Are you going to keep on giving God the glory? Are you going to engage in grumpy and complain? Are you going to have a praise part or a pity part? Just how do you plan to deal with life's episodes of frustration? Yeah. I was glad to my dear prayer. Yeah. Yes. Oh, how are you dealing with frustration now? Yes. Because they are going to come. Yes. We need to notice that all the things oh, that Israel went through yeah. was a result of God leading them. Yeah. And I think sometimes when we're going through stuff, we say the devil is this. But if you notice in the text, the devil was not involved. The devil was not busy. There was a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. And God was the you. What happened when God puts you in trouble? And being God becomes conspicuous beside you. Gets you in a mess. But if you keep on following, it'll get you out. If you can follow God into the den of lion, and God will lock the jaws of the lion and make them lean out and act like lamb. God is eating. I do know tonight that having a difficult addition, your circumstances may be. God will not let you down. You can always trust God. When you face the winds of affliction, trust God. When you face the storms of life, trust God. When you encounter the waves of disappointment, trust God. When your problems pile high, keep trusting God. When your circumstances get bad, keep trusting God. When you fly on your back and sick as a dog, keep trusting God. When the child is 
crying and the girl is messed up. Keep trusting God. For God is able. Yeah. I will trust yeah. in the Lord. Yeah. Those that die, I trust them. Yeah. Those that deplete, I trust them. Yeah. Those that wind blow, I will trust them. Anybody know what I'm talking about? I wish you could live good enough. I was going to church to keep me from having lying, praying, backbiting. I was behaving like that. But I find out the saints are many times ants. Because we have to get to the point of maturity. We got four saints in the church. And I'm not talking about church of God in Christ. Yeah. Yeah. I'm thinking about it in the Baptist church. Yeah.